Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your February 2023 general readings. We're looking at the first half of February from the 1st through the 15th, and this reading is for the air sign of Aquarius. Welcome everyone. Hope you're all doing well as always. Thanks for being here, watching the videos, liking, sharing, subscribing, everything that supports my YouTube channel. Thank you. So, Aquarius. Aquarius is your Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, or if you are cross-watching for an Aquarian, this reading for the first half of February 2023 is for you. So it's a general reading, as we always say. If you know any of your other signs, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, watch them all, because each one can bring in a little additional insight and perspective into what's going on in your life personally. Uh, these are general readings, so of course they'll resonate a little differently. Um, but it often helps to watch your other signs, even if you don't know all of them, even if you just know your sun rising or moon, uh, watch them because it brings in, again, a little additional insight and perspective to kind of put it together to help you through your own personal situation. Now, if you find that something in the reading does resonate with you or the reading itself really touches you and resonates with you and you'd like to take a deeper look, kind of go behind the curtain a bit uh, and reach out for a personal reading, for yourself or as a gift for someone else or you just want information on those from me uh, please feel free to email me directly at maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com you can also get that contact info by clicking the description link i'd love to hear from you i can usually respond the same day with more information i do offer uh, quite a wide variety of readings in all areas of life all different lengths of uh of readings as well so uh, if you're interested, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Um, still quite popular right now are the overviews I do, which give you a look ahead at what's coming into life over the next 6 or 12 months in all areas of life. Of course, you can order those anytime, but end of one year, beginning of a new year is always popular with people because they like to see what's coming in. Uh, or if you're starting kind of a new phase in life, it's also good to take a look at too. So, okay, let's move right into your reading, Aquarius. I am using the Tarot of Dreams and clarifying with the Radiant Rider weight. Hmm. We begin with the Ten of Cups, the Happy Home, Happily Ever After card. Tens represent cycle completion or fulfillment and achievement. The Ten of Cups is the Ten of Water, the Ten of Emotion. So this is a card that represents, I mean, we call it the Happy, happy Home, Happily Ever After card. It represents feeling like everything has finally come together, especially in regards to home, family, marriage, children, sometimes the house itself. Uh, beautiful, wonderful card. It's like a really happy conclusion around home and family. Could be marriage for some of you. With faith, in this deck called Faith, in other decks it's the Hierophant. So tradition, uh, institutional energy. But here in this deck, the artist Sura Marcheri literally wanted to make it more ab about, you know, the idea of faith or about faith itself. Beautiful energy, but still... Um, strong marriage energy for some of you. The Four of Cups, an offer being made. Should I make this offer? Should I take this offer? I'm not sure. With the Two of Wands, choice. The Two of Fire. Twos usually represent duality, crossroads, needing to make a choice, having a choice, needing to, you know, choose one path or the other. This is no different. It's the Two of Wands, so it's a path of action. Do I do this? Do I not do this? Again, strong marriage energy or marriage potential or proposal here. The Hanging Man makes sense. You want to take your time in any kind of profound decision-making process. The Hanging Man hangs upside down, which might not always be the most comfortable position and it's a card of not taking any particularly decisive action just yet things are still playing out you're waiting you're watching you're getting more information taking your time with the six of cups a card of history nostalgia reminiscence People, places, situations you have some kind of history with. It can go all the way back to childhood, family, roots of origin, or just people you have a historical connection with. This is also a secondary soulmate card. From the bottom of the deck, the overall energy and guidance is the hermit. Again, that makes sense. It's a very contemplative energy. 
you know, kind of going within and, and, and seeking some wisdom, insight, guidance, looking at your, your life experience and using that to help guide you as well, perhaps seeking out some guidance from somebody whose opinion uh, and experience you, you value and respect. I mean, that's the whole reading here. You're contemplating making a, uh, you're, you're contemplating a choice or a decision, uh, maybe taking a path of action. It's centered around home and family, but since this is a general reading, that can mean a variety of different things. For some of you, I'm getting a very strong marriage vibe. Do I um, propose marriage? Do I accept a proposal of marriage? Do we buy a home? Do we sell a home? Do we... Again, there's a choice and a decision here. Let's start clarifying overall energy of the hermit, which obviously is going to have a, a, a pretty significant, I think, impact on home, family, whatever that means for you. And this whole reading, although it's a short period of time, two weeks generally, uh, you're not sure. You're thinking about it, which you should. All right, let's clarify that overall energy of the hermit. With the hanging man and the six of cups too, it could be that you're you're waiting. You're you're talking to family. You're talking with friends. You're talking with again people you have a history with, maybe to help you make this decision as well. The hermit. <laughs> I'm laughing because, okay, let's clarify this. Let's go within and contemplate and see how, how what's the best way to, to walk through this situation. And I've got the Four of Cups and the Two of Wands. And I'm laughing because we already have the Four of Cups with the Two of Wands as well. So pretty strong validation here that you are waiting, listening, perhaps talking to some people. You're, you're trying to figure out what the best course of action is. Do I make this offer? Or if you've received an offer, do I accept this offer? <laughs> that was kind of funny. All right, let's clarify the Ten of Cups. Happy home, happily ever after, marriage, childbirth, happiness and harmony. I mean, the Ten of Cups and Faith of the Hierophant, this, this is like marriage, institutional energy, or, or your, your home, buying your home, your family home. Page of Cups and the Chariot. A loving message. I keep seeing offer. I maybe, I keep hearing offer. Again, could be an offer. He's actually offering, bringing a bouquet of flowers. Will you accept it? Right? The Chariot. Success on a difficult path. We can do this. We can do this together. Clarify faith or the Hierophant. The Three of Wands and the Hermit again. There's a strong sense of internal contemplation here. The Three of Wands building for towards the future, looking towards the future with positivity, hope, and optimism. You've laid some of the groundwork. Clarify Four of Cups. And again, in terms of the issue being around home and family, it could be anything. Some of you, it might be marriage. Some of you, it might be having children, you know, whether conceiving naturally or adopting. It could be about the home property itself, like buying a family home, selling a family home. Family, home, commitment is essential here. Clarify Four of Cups. I'm not sure if you should take the offer. But I don't see any action in this reading yet, specifically. Four of Cups, the Tower, and the Nine of Swords. Okay, stop that, Aquarius. <laughs> Those of you who follow me know I. Uh, this is the only one. Of, I think the only tarot card I actually really dislike because it speaks of a level of stress and anxiety and overthinking something obsessively and in a negative way that I don't like. You know, it's making it's thinking about something too much. Number one, and number two, it, in too negative a way. You know, like fearing the worst possible outcome. What do I do if this happens? What do I do if that happens? You know, over and over and over in your head because it's usually fear of an unknown future you know 
and trying to envision that future, but it's kind of like envisioning it with the worst possible outcome. It's too much. You can cut that down. It's not that your fears might not be valid. It's just that this is blowing them way out of proportion. I mean, the tower, like absolute, you know, unexpected events here, it would probably mean, you know, absolute destruction. It's like, okay, I'm contemplating this offer, but I'm, this is like an almost overwhelming fear that it would end badly. If I make this decision, if I make this offer, you know, uh, is it going to blow up in my face and the whole thing's going to fall apart? If I accept this offer and move forward, uh, what if I do? And then the whole thing falls apart. I mean, right? It's like blowing it up really bad in your head, no matter which way you look at it. Don't do that. Clarify the two of wands, choices, decisions. Another two, the two of pentacles and the five of pentacles. Feeling abandoned, rejected, shut out, left in the cold, not good enough. It's a card of insufficiency and lack of feeling like you have to beg, whether financially, materially, emotionally. Again, it's overthinking this decision. I mean, if it's an important decision, you need to put thought into it. But this is like anticipating the absolute worst possible outcome either way. If, For example, if it's about proposing marriage, that's the easiest example. Um, if I don't, It'll, she'll probably leave me, it'll break my heart and I'll never recover. Or if I do, we'll get married and then we'll get divorced and it'll break. My, I mean, right? Like it's like just the worst possible outcome either way. It's and, and that really hems you in. It like fences you into a very small box. So try to cut that down. And so then there's the sense of waiting here. Again, I think, you know, your fears may be keeping you a bit stalled or a bit stuck here. The hanging man isn't always positive. Sometimes it just represents a lack of action because you're waiting for something that you don't even have specific in your head. So you just wait forever. And most of the time when that happens, the opportunity will eventually pass you by. But let's clarify it. Strength and the Seven of Wands. So facing your fears, your doubts, your insecurities. And this is holding on to that which you've invested, standing up, protecting, guarding, defending. It's quite clear you don't want to lose something or someone, but you're also not taking action because you're, it's almost like you're at this point of paralyzation, like a, like a deer in the headlights. Okay, well, if I say yes and do this, move forward in this way, this horrible thing could happen. But if I say no and I don't do anything, then this horrible thing could happen. And the, the consideration, the overthinking, both of those things actually paralyzes you right in the center. And it can sometimes be self-fulfilling, right? I mean, opportunities aren't don't remain forever. Let's clarify it. But you obviously don't want to lose something either. And in order to do that, during this very, what's showing as a strong internal contemplative thinking about it time, um, you need to look at specifically at what your fears and doubts and insecurities are and address them and talk about them too, because this obviously includes more than just you. Let's clarify that six of cups. You may want to talk about it with friends and family with whom you have history and, you know, people whose opinion you respect. Clarify six of cups. But that's also um, the secondary soulmate card. Oh my goodness. And here's the primary soulmate card, the two of cups. So whoever your the partner or the person here is, um, they're like your person. Love, caring, respect, friendship, karmic connection. Eight of Swords and the Knight of Wands, two vastly opposing energetic cards. The Knight of Wands has a mission and a quest and he charges off, very assertive, very aggressive, knows what he wants and goes right after it, very single focused. Then we have the opposite here, the Eight of Swords. I can't because of this. I can't because of that. I'm trapped. I'm helpless. I can't do anything right here, which is not good with the Hanging Man because it's a card of feeling really paralyzed. But what's being paralyzed is yourself because Swords is governed by the element of air. And air uh, is over, governs our intellectual atmosphere, meaning our mind, what goes on between our ears, our thoughts and ideologies and perspectives, how we look at things which affects how we communicate with things. So these swords could represent one large,
fear or ideology in your head, or it could represent a bunch of small ones, you know, the reasons and excuses we give ourselves for not taking action. Well, I can't because of this, or I can't because of that. This is where you're, you're kind of stuck. You're stuck, you know, because you're afraid to move forward and do something here, make an offer, accept an offer. You're also afraid that if you don't, you'll lose something. So you're stuck, your fears, your fears and doubts and insecurities and not addressing those and, and talking about them openly is, is also part of the issue here. So that needs to be addressed. You need to kind of, if we just keep them in here, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So this is about actually addressing them, that strength card. You know, looking at your fears, doubts, insecurities, stating them, writing them down, talking about them with another person, getting them out in the open so that you can actually look at them realistically, right? All right, let's end with some advice, guidance, feedback from Spirit for Aquarius, first half of February. The Three of Pentacles, working together, teamwork, collaboration. The Four of Wands, another one of the happy homes, happy home celebrations that include social celebrations, events that include family and friends, a traditional marriage card as well. The Ten of Cups again, happy home, another marriage card, home, family, children, childbirth. The Sun, light, love, warmth, laughter, uplifting, moving forward, the pressures being lifted, lessened, or even just completely vanishing. Um, it's quite clear here that spirit supports strongly whatever this issue is, the Ten of Cups doing it, like taking the op taking the uh, accepting the offer or making the offer. That's what spirit's supporting here. And actually with these cards, they're saying that it'll be kind of like, you know, you're afraid this worst is going to happen. And then so you finally get up the courage to do it. And then you discover that it's fine. It's so fine. It's better than fine. It's it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's like, you know, when you were a kid laying in bed at night and it's dark and, and something happens or you think you hear something under the bed or in the closet and you're convinced that something's hiding in there waiting to get you, right? And finally you summon the courage to throw the covers off and turn on the light and go look and there's nothing there. It's totally fine, right? That's kind of what this feels like. So, but as I always say, free will, free agency. Okay, Aquarius. Those are your messages for the first half of February. I hope you enjoyed them or at least found them useful or gave you something to think about or was a validation for you. Again, if this does resonate with you and you'd like to take a deeper look, pull the curtain back a bit and examine it, feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to hear from you and to work with you or with someone you know if you're purchasing it as a gift for a friend. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the February mid-month readings, which will come out probably right around Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's a little bit early, which whether you're romantically attached or not, is a day to honor and uh, celebrate the people we care about and love in our lives. So uh, happy, I'm sorry, happy birthday, happy Valentine's Day to you. And I hope to see you back here again around that time. Take care. Bye-bye.